Hey, good evening, everyone. My name's Janelle Riley. I'm an editor at Variety. Do you guys want to know who won Dancing with the Stars? <laughs> no, I, I'm not going to spoil it, but it was the, it was the couple I wanted. Um, <laughs> thank you so, so much for coming out. Um, I want to introduce the actor who plays Christian in the film. You have, of course, seen him in films like Loose and Waves and The Trial of the Chicago Seven. Please welcome Kelvin Harrison, Jr. <laughs> I'm auditioning to be on the new season of Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> now, you've done a few musicals in a row, actually, because you did the high note. You got to sing in that. And I hear you just played B.D. King? Yes. <laughs> is that the Elvis movie? Yeah, oh, in the Elvis wow. movie, yeah. I did that top of the year. That is so cool. Yeah. This is your new niche now? Oh, no. <laughs> this was the last one. <laughs> you sure? I'm, well, no, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, people are going to see this. You might have a whole new side career ahead of you. Um, this is an audience of your fellow SAG after actors. Hey! Uh, so I always like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? And I know I've asked you this before, but I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> um, I was in New Orleans and I was a marketing major. Um, and I went to school and I was, uh, I was like, I need... <laughs> I was like in New Orleans in the Hollywood South, it was, it was like, okay, you can day play on things. And I was like, okay, cool. And I saw this casting notice for 12 Years a Slave. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna submit. And so I submitted and I went to this like, immediately to callbacks because I have the look. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I, I met Steve, I'd improv a little bit. Two hours later, I got the job, went to set. Did, I was victim number two. And I got it and got my SAG card from that. So your first acting experience was an Oscar-winning movie with Steve McQueen. Crazy. I was the first time I watched the Oscars, too, and I was like, whoa! Really? Yeah, because my parents were just, yeah, my parents were, yeah, my parents. So <laughs> did that, did you sort of catch the bug after that and want to be an actor? Yeah, I talked to Chiwetel and Lupita, and I met all these incredible actors on that movie, and, and, and they explained to me the, the power of, of, of that profession and, and, and artistry and storytelling and, and how to prep for a role. And I was like, oh, wow, this is it's a lot deeper than I thought it would be. And it made me excited. And I was like, you know, I was a musician at first because um, my parents are musicians. And I was like, well, that actually sounds more like how I can explain my truth and <laughs> express myself better in acting. Wow. That's, that's where I connect. And so I was like, I'm going to take a class and stuff. So, yeah. That is so cool. Do, were they okay that you gave up the marketing degree? Oh, my dad still to this day is like, go finish school, boss. I mean, you don't know. To the, here today, gone tomorrow. And I was like, oh, thank you. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, of course, brings us to Cyrano. As I was telling you backstage, this is my favorite play of all time that, you know, obviously served as the, the basis for this musical film version adaptation of the stage musical. Um, right, right. Were you familiar with utter iterations when this came your way? Um, no. I mean, I heard of Roxanne. With Steve. Yes, Roxanne. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, that's a great film. <laughs> and, but then um, they sent me, my agent sent me the um, Edmund, Edmund, is Edmund Rossman, right? That's how you say his name? Let's ask the actor, actors. What is it? Ross Stan, thank you. Oh, this is bad. Um, oh, the author. I thought you were talking about like a breakdown service. No, no, no. no. Okay. They sent me the. <laughs> Edmund Ross. Yes, sorry. <laughs> and um, and I read that, and then I met with Joe, and then Joe sent me the script, and then I read the script, and then I auditioned, and so on and so forth. But I, that was the first time I actually heard of the proper. Really? Play. Did you go back and read the original text? Yes, yeah, so that was the first thing I did before really? I even met with Joe, and I was like, "Hey, it's long." <laughs> I was like, in that, 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 that language, Whew. you want me to do that? <laughs> and he was like, no, there's a different version of it. And I was like, okay, yeah. that's much better. Let me read that one. I'll understand it more. Because I read it twice and I was like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I do love this adaptation by Erica Schmidt. Yes, I yes. Her name. I think it's fantastic on so many levels. And I think it, it, that some of the other versions I've seen, I always love it, but... Uh, some of the characters can be a little problematic, mm -hmm. and I feel like she really addressed those issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. she, she did a, a really, really good job. Yeah. Were you familiar with Joe Wright's work? Because he's one of my favorite directors. Yes, I saw Pride and Prejudice, Atonement. Um, I saw The Darkest Hour. So I, I, I was familiar with Joe. Um, and he's a fantastic filmmaker, so I was really excited. And I was like, I couldn't believe he wanted to talk to me. And it was so funny because like, he's so... 
He's just so he is very cool. He's so cool. And he, he yeah. you wouldn't think he would be that cool. You know what I mean? To have this like real love for like period pieces. I thought he was gonna be like a real nerd. And he was just he's really chill. And then I was like, I zoomed him and he had my picture in the background. I was like, are we zooming because this is an audition or do I have the job? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is there something you want to tell me? But um yeah, I, I I was a big fan of his and he seemed to he was like, I saw you in the high note. He said, I don't know how I feel about that movie, but I like you. <laughs> okay, first of all, I love the high note. Tell him, Jack, yeah. Joe. <laughs> Secondly, I love that Joe Wright is sitting at home in his castle in England oh, watching the high note. I love that too. Honestly, I got a good laugh out of that. <laughs> That's so fantastic though. Um, and I assume he had a picture of you because he was doing casting. He yes, just ran yes. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was a framed photo yes. of uh, me. <laughs> hey, whatever works, it got you the job. <laughs> uh, this is obviously a musical adaptation on top of everything else. I mean, as I said, you, you've obviously got experience with musicals, but uh, you know, was that intimidating to take on? Yeah, it was it was interesting because I it was the it was the folk element to the songs because mm. you know if it was just proper musical theater like normal songs I'd be like oh, okay I kind of get the tone but I was trying to figure out how do we fit this into 18th century France <laughs> and I was like how does this sound how do you want this to sound and I had to get familiar with the Nationals and and, and learn their sound and then also figure out what it sounds like from, from my voice, you know? Um, so that was its own process, but we had this amazing vocal coach that we all went to, and we worked with her a lot on storytelling and just building our vocal cords and where do we sing from and all that stuff. And um, yeah, it was, it was fun though, it was fun. Everyone was nervous, Pete was nervous, really? Haley wasn't nervous. Haley, well, Haley was kind of nervous, I guess. <laughs> but like, Haley's a singer, so I think yeah. me and Pete were just kind of like, well, what are we doing? <laughs> By the way, shocker of the year, who knew Peter Dinklage had such a beautiful voice? Dude, that's how I felt. Yeah, it's I not was like, fair. Oh, that's what I said <laughs> every day. I was like, it's not fair. <laughs> Where did that come from? Uh, and both Haley and Peter had done the stage show, so you were, I guess, sort of the newcomer to this group. Um, you know, was that a little, little intimidating, or did they welcome you right in? It was. I was, I was nervous only because I was like, um, they had more time with the material. They had more time to settle in and to figure out how to ground themselves in this world because it is very fantastical in a way it's you know it's a fairy tale in, in some ways and so i was like how do you how, i don't know how do you make it make sense and but it was very helpful because joe gave us two weeks of rehearsal and then in that time i got to see Haley and peter work through the scenes and then throw in ben mendelson and you know and joe would sit there every day and we would all sit together and run all the lines and he set up tape on the floor and we would do like mock blocking and stuff like that and just experiment it and it kind of allowed us to just free ourselves and just play and peter really was like don't feel obligated to play period he was like, just do you. You were, we, you know, we wanted you to be in this because of who you are and and what you offer as a human. And so bring that to Christian. I was like, so you saying I'm I'm tongue tied and I don't know what to say? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> no, no. Um, did you meet with them prior to booking the part? I don't know if there was any kind of a chemistry read with either of them. No, no, no. no. It was all during quarantine. You know, we were in lockdown for about four months, and I was sitting there going. I'll never work again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then Joe was like, I, I did one tape, and then suddenly a week later, they were like, yeah, you're going to... That's amazing. <laughs> you're going to Sicily. Are you generally good at auditioning? I feel like you must be. Auditioning? Yeah. I'm horrible. Oh, come on. I'm actually really bad. I actually, I don't, I ref, I, this sounds bad. I refuse to go into a room because I remember I had that audition for some Clint Eastwood movie and I went in and I, I did the audition and I knew it was bad and I called my manager afterwards and I was like, I'm going home right now before they even submit the tape and I'm going to tape it on my own and send it to them and beg them. I was like, I'm going to do it much better than I just did in that room because I was, I was too nervous. I started like, I, I started sweating. I started kind of crying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not weird or anything. It's just, you know, it's just crying. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you, you have booked a lot of roles. You must be doing something right. Or are those all on tape? It's all on tape. Yeah. At least I can control it. I worked with this director recently. He was like, do you feel weird about watching yourself on the monitor? I was like, I'm from the self-tape generation. Yeah. That's all we do, dog. <laughs> <laughs> So your scenes with Peter Dinklage are so fantastic, and he is obviously just one of the greatest mm -hmm. of all time. What was it like to, you know, trade barbs with him on screen? It's just fun, man. He's just, 
Pete just kept reminding me, he was like, you young actors take yourselves so seriously. He said, it's great <laughs> because you come to work prepared. He said, but sometimes you, you forget that this is fun. He was like, and so every day he would just constantly, like he would make jokes before every take. If you could see the stuff he would say, I'd be like, Pete, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. <laughs> but it would be, it just, it would really lighten the mood. So you would come in with a different energy and, and just, you know, it's play. It's pretend, it's play. And, and to watch him, I remember when we were doing some of the scenes towards the end, when we're in that like cave right before, on Mount Etna, and I, would, I remember watching him do it, because that was such a hard day. I mean, I remember the set, we were, it was raining, and it was so cold, and the set rained in, so it all crashed down. They had to rebuild it. We were sitting in hotels Jeez. and stuff. We were freezing, and then Pete came in, and he was like, we only had three hours to shoot this. this you know, We don't know if we're gonna get the shots and stuff like that. And then Pete crushed it every take, and I said, hold on! <laughs> How do you do that? And he just smirked and was just like, one day you'll know. Oh. I was like, you older actors love that one. Yeah, you love do. that one. And I was like, hopefully I know if I if don't, you know, start, stop working because you won't tell me the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you've worked with some amazing co-stars, but at the same time, would you ever like catch yourself in the middle of a scene and just be like a fan of his watching him work? There was so many, I, I mean, I find myself just, he would say, stop smiling at me. <laughs> And I was like, I watched all five seasons of Game of Thrones in five days. Tyrion, I love you. <laughs> just, just making sure you know there's a sixth season. Oh, yeah, I watched okay. the, the last few, but it was the first five. I caught up okay. to five, and then I started watching them in order. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. no worries. I, like, <laughs> no, I didn't miss make out. Make sure you know, you know it ended, okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, I was mentioning backstage that um, I think you're the best Christian I've ever seen because that role, yeah, sure. I'm not gonna step on someone's applause. <laughs> um, that role is, is often the character is just kind of portrayed as um, not very bright. And the, 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 a lot of times productions don't really explore that character. And I love that this one did. And I think it's a combination of the script and you as a performer. Were there conversations you, you had about like how to make him a fully realized character? Yeah, I mean, the first Zoom I had with Joe, I was like, you know, I, I did, I was aware that Christians usually played like this. And I was like, and I was like, I, I, you know, I don't want you to be concerned that we'll lose all of the comedy. And I understand that that's part of the relationship between Cyrano and Christian. I was like, but I think it's really important to me that he, he does have something special and it's his emotional intelligence. And I felt like, you know, I was like, Christian knows what's going on, but he's a man that is trust, he's trusting. He's innocent and he's like a young kid that has this idea, like they all do in some ways, but he doesn't have any scars yet about these ideas of love. And he's coming in here and he's believing what everyone tells him immediately. And it becomes a journey about a loss of innocence towards the end, and yeah. then kind of going, whoa, once you kind of go through a few heartbreaks, it gets a bit complicated, doesn't it? You know, <laughs> and people get a little bit different. And so I, I, I really, you know, it was, it, was, it was trying to find this, this sincerity in him in every beat. Yeah. And it wasn't like, I didn't know. It was just, I'll, I'll believe what you tell me. If you say that, yes. <laughs> Absolutely, exciting. So yeah, and he's just, he's excited about life. He's excited to have new friends. He's excited to have love, you know? And he wants to tell her the truth on more than one occasion. Yeah, he actually yeah. tries to. Yeah, it's, it's really kind of heartbreaking. It is, it yeah. is. Yeah, there's a part of me that was like, hey, this is a new adaptation. Maybe it'll work out. You know, I know, that's crazy. I, know. I thought the same thing at the end. I was like, maybe Cyrano survives this time. I really did. Sorry, hopeless romantic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, thank you, thank <laughs> <Woo>! you. <laughs> so as an actor, how much does it help because you can research a role, you can learn the lines, then you show up on these beautiful sets and you put on these amazing costumes. How much does that you know, ultimately help you find the character? Oh, it was huge. I mean, I think for me, it's always the shoes lately. I don't know what really? it is, I'm short, so. But it's like, I love when I get to put on those boots. I had these like boots with like four inch heels and I felt cool. <laughs> I was like, I was walking down that cobblestone and I had the whole, the vest and the sword. I was like, don't make me use it now. <laughs> don't make me use it. But it, it, you start to kind of feel, you know, you start to feel like it straightens your back. You start yeah. to, your posture starts to change and you start looking at the world and you kind of go, oh, that's where I go. That's where I sleep. This is where I walk down to, you know, maybe take a, so take a walk to breathe. I remember in the middle of the night, a lot of the times I would just kind of go for a walk 
walking, I would try out the Christian walk. So like when Christian's happy and when Christian's <laughs> nervous and when Christian's just, uh, he's upset. <laughs> so I was like, and people, I remember all the people in, um, in, in Sicily would just kind of stare at me. And I remember these kids kept filming me in a park. And they're probably just like, this man is crazy. <laughs> I was like, you just wait. I'm going to be in a big movie. <laughs> They should put that like on the uh, extra deleted scenes on the DVD. Seriously. Yeah, if they, if they can find those kids. <laughs> um, uh, as I mentioned, you, you, Joe Wright is one of my favorite directors. You've worked with a lot of great directors, even though you're fairly new to this. I mean, you started with Steve McQueen. <laughs> um, what do you as an actor hope for from a director when you're on set? Just confidence. I think it's, you know, I think everybody is, you know, every artist has their own process and every artist comes into to a, a new movie probably with their insecurities and their fears, but it's just nice to know that they have a perspective and then I can always come in. I, my job to me is always just to, it's like you have this beautiful foundation and idea and I'm just adding leaves. You know what I mean? If you got the, the, the tree bark and all the, you know what I mean, the trunk of the tree got going on and it's grounded in the roots, I can just make it look pretty. You know what I mean? And whatever your idea is, let's, let's develop that together. So as long as you know what that is, then I'm good. If you have no clue, then I can't help you. Mm. <laughs> it must have been nice to, um, you know, I think this is the first thing you did out of quarantine. Just happy to be back on set. Yeah, I was like, honestly, I was really scared. I, Cause I think, you know, it was, it was such a long time. I mean, we, I, the last thing I did was Charlie Chicago 7. No and then I left and we were, you know, we were doing that Waves press tour for like forever. I was like, first time doing a press tour that long. And I was like, why do people do that? And I was like, this is such a crazy part of the job. And then I finished that and then pandemic hit. I was supposed to start that t Euphoria. And I was signed on to that and I was excited. And I was like, I met the cast. We did a test shoot and everything. And then I was stuck in LA with an air mattress and no furniture. And I was like, <gasps> I was like, what do I do? And so I sat around and I read a lot of books, you know, I watched a lot of movies. And then I, I, when I got that job, I was so happy, but that I also was like, I don't know how to act anymore. Mm. I got really scared. I remember telling Joe, I was like, I think you should send me home. <laughs> I was like, I don't really, I don't know. I don't know. And I had a lot of conversations with Peter and he was very, very kind to me. And um, yeah, it, it, it kind of, it took a process for me to kind of get comfortable again, but. Yeah. I mean, it was probably strange for everyone coming back on set. There's probably like crew members you know really well, and you've never seen the bottom part of their face. Oh yeah, I mean, to, to, at the rap, I was like, when people started dropping, you know, people got comfortable on rap day, and then suddenly <laughs> everybody's dropping the mask, smiling, trying to say, "Hey, you, <laughs> you know me," and I was like, "Oh boy, I don't know any of you." Like, <laughs> well, yeah. So what did end up being the most challenging part of playing this role? You mentioned, you know, one particular difficult day, maybe that was it, or if it was just something about the character itself. Yeah, I think with, um, with Christian, it, really, it was trying to find that fine line between being tongue-tied, but also f having agency, you know what I mean? This is, he's a man who's he's very reactive, and he comes in, he's just kind of, I know what I want, you know? I, I saw the girl, <laughs> Me and Joe had a good time with this one. We were just like, it's just facts. Whatever I'm told is what I'm going to do. I saw the girl. I like the girl. The girl likes me? Oh, I'm going to get the girl. She wants letters? All right. Go get it. She, you know what I mean? So it was just like, this, these are the beats. But it was just kind of like, well, how do you do that without... Because like, does that mean he's actually you know, not that smart? Yeah, yeah. Or does it mean that he just hasn't had that many experiences where this is the world he exists in? So it was trying to find that line, but also like making it fun, but yeah. still making him feel like, you know, he's just a dude. He's just a dude <laughs> that wants to have, a, you know, he wants to be in love like everybody else, you know? It's not, not a crime, right? No, and not everyone can be a brilliant poet. Exactly, yeah. I mean, like, come on, Cyrano. Yeah. Like, seriously, those two, to be honest, High standards, <laughs> very high standards. I mean, I'm not writing any letters. Any, I mean, are you guys? <laughs> hey, am I right? Thank you. <laughs> so what's up next for you? You played B.B. King in yes. the Elvis movie. And 
I, well, I'll let you say. Yeah, it. so I just I did I did that, and I you know, left Italy, and literally I took a week for Christmas, and went to Australia, did the Elvis movie. Baz is incredible, and that, that whole movie is so much fun. I played BB. I left there. I got this movie called Chevalier, which is in the same time period, and it's about Joseph Ballone, who was a real person who was Mozart's contemporary, and um, he was a com brilliant composer in Paris. And so I just left Prague on Friday, and I just got back here, and we just finished that, and that was great. I've been practicing the violin. I'm very good, I think. <laughs> I will serenade you all later. <laughs> but no poetry. No poetry. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I did that, and I've been doing The Lion King with Barry Jenkins. And what? I didn't know yeah, yeah. this. Yeah, I play Scar. <gasps> Your Scar? Yeah. <laughs> Get out. Oh, this is the origin. This is the prequel. I yeah, keep yeah. forgetting that Barry's doing that. That's so I know, me too. Yeah. He shows up on the Zoom call, and I'm like, right. <laughs> This is what we're doing. Oh, it may be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. may sound like a strange question, but do you find that one role often helps you with another, like preparing for Cyrano, you could then use for Chevalier? 100%. Yeah. Because I did Cyrano, it's the only reason I was able to actually get through Chevalier. Because yeah. it, it, it taught me etiquette. It taught me, you know, just the, the, the style of that, that's, that period. I don't know. There's something. It's, that's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. I don't, I look at, I still, when I saw the movie and I looked at Pete, I was like, I don't know how Pete does it, you know? It's, <laughs> it's, it's challenging, but um, that really helped me with that. And then Chevalier helped me with Scar. <laughs> really? And Scar helped me with Chevalier. So, you know, all, they all work together. I think every yeah. job you, you do prepares you for the next one. So I just, I just, if I get a job, I kind of go, well, something's coming. Something's coming where this is going to make sense. I don't know why I'm here now, but I'm going to have a good time. So <laughs> You're going to find a role that is like a singing, dancing, violin playing lion. And oh. it's going to all line up perfectly. Cats. <laughs> no. Cats no, too. No more of that. <laughs> oh, cast me. <laughs> Actually, I would see that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, again, congratulations on a beautiful movie. I love this film so much. I, I don't want to sound like I had low expectations, but it was just such a pleasant surprise when I saw it. And I just, I found myself smiling for like a week. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's <laughs> and I'm so glad that after a few months of downtime, you just worked, worked, work. Um, so please enjoy a vacation. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for being a great audience. Yes, thank you guys for coming. <laughs> Appreciate it.